Hey everyone, I'm Eric Demain. And I'm Jason Lynch, and we're here to tell you about Ying Yang puzzles and an NP completeness result. And this is joint work with uh, Michael Rudoy and Yushi Uno. So first, we're going to start off with a different problem that's not a puzzle, uh, but has a lot of relations to Yin Yang puzzles. And here, we're discussing grid graph connected partitioning. So in this problem, we're given a square grid graph in which the vertices are assigned to one of two sets, either this red color or this blue color. And we're asked whether you can assign colors to all of the other vertices so that the resulting color classes are connected. So here we see all of these reds are connected and similarly, the blues. All right, so one of the things we prove here is that this problem is NP complete. Another related problem is grid graph tree partitioning. Same setup, grid graph, where we have two color classes, the red and the blue, but this time we force the solution to be a tree rather than uh, any connected portion. And you'll see we had to use a different solution in this case than the previous slide. And now we're going to get to the uh, originally mentioned, the title titular um, yin yang puzzle. We're going to look at the picture on the right and we're going to take a kind of duel of it. Uh, so here's a different phrasing, which will turn out to be almost the same problem, not quite. You're given an n by n board, and on, like on the left, and some of the circles, some of the square cells are pre labeled with white or black circles. And then you want to fill in the other uh, blank squares here to satisfy two properties. The first one is that each color class is connected. So we're going to get a connected white set and a connected black set. And uh, there are no uh, monochromatic two by two squares. So you saw uh, here when I made a two by two black, that was forbidden. So I'll erase that. Um, so you can make some derivations, for example, for this white circle in the top left to get out. Um, it needs to, uh, both of these cells need to be white in order to connect to the rest of the white. Uh, you can similarly argue that the rest of the boundary needs to be black. If you omitted, if this black uh, circle was somehow connected to this other black boundary circle in some other way, this would have to be white, and then that white is disconnected. So in fact, we have black all along the boundary here. Um, and then, for example, we can't have black here because of the two by two rule, so it has to be white. Uh, this one similarly has to be white, this one has to be white. Then by connectivity on the white, this one has to be white, and this one has to be white. And then by the two by two rule, this one has to be black. And so, yay, we solved the puzzle. Give you a flavor of yin yang puzzles. And then these two puzzles are roughly equivalent. Let's say what that means in the moment. Um, well, we told you two grid graph problems. One was connected graph, a grid graph tree partition. That is the version that is essentially the same as yin yang. Um, and if you remove the no monochromatic two by two rule from yin yang, then you get essentially grid graph connected partition. Okay, so why are these the same? Uh, well, obviously, we have the connectivity constraints causing the white and black circles to be connected, just like the two color classes in our uh, graph partition. Here, this two by two rule is preventing small cycles uh, pretty much immediately. And then there is a very useful uh, insight or derivation in the Yingning puzzle that's going to be related to why we can't have bigger cycles. So here, if we observe, these black circles have to be connected through some sort of path. Now, similarly, the white circles are also going to be, need to be connected through some other path. There's no way to do this without these paths intersecting, so that's impossible. Similarly, if we have a full cycle of black circles, they're going to partition this region into two portions, an inside and an outside. And we once again have disconnected portions of white circles. Well, except, and here's where the approximate equal comes in, uh, the boundary, doesn't have an outside, so we could have a cycle along the boundary. And on a reduction that's easy to get rid of, we can simply make sure that the boundary contains a single white circle and a single black circle, uh, but it means these are not quite the same. 
So uh, we prove all of these problems uh, are MP complete. Um, the first sort of pair of similar problems are straight up yin yang puzzles and grid graph tree partition. Uh, second pair is yin yang without the two by two rule and grid graph connected partition. This is interesting because it's a natural partitioning problem, maybe even more natural. Um, and it's a good warm up for the proof. It turns out the second proof is more difficult than, sorry, the first proof is more difficult than the second. So we'll do them in the other order. Both of our uh, NP hardness proofs are reductions from this problem called tree residue vertex breaking introduced at a previous WADS actually. Uh, and even if you don't care about the particular problems we're talking about, I think this is a useful reduction tool for your own NP hardness proofs. So you can uh, see that in a moment. Um, but first, uh, on the design side, for fun, we're going to describe a font, mathematical font, based on yin-yang puzzles. And then we'll get to uh, the background and history on these problems and then talk about a little bit about the proofs. So here's a font. Uh, it's A in the top left to Z in the bottom right. You have to stare a little bit to phase out the white and just look at the black and you see the letters. Um, and the fun thing here is each of the letters has a corresponding puzzle, which we found by brute force search, um, greedily removing clues from the puzzle, uh, subject to the puzzle still being uniquely solvable. Uh, ran that uh, dozens of times per letter and took the hardest puzzle for each one. Uh, and you can uh, play with this puzzle online. This is the first official release. Uh, if you click on this website or Jason will send it in chat, um, you will get this fun uh, page where you can type in your favorite message, like here's Halifax, where we are in theory right now. Um, and you can work on these puzzles and say, oh, well, black here has to get out. So I guess uh, these three must be black and there's two instances of A. So you can simultaneously solve all the puzzles and have fun, or you could send someone this as a secret message, and after they solve all the puzzles, they say, oh, it's Halifax, cool. Um, and for extra fun, uh, if you get bored during this talk, you can go to this website and solve this big puzzle. Um, so this is based on concatenating four of the letters, but then uh, minimizing the clues for those letters uh, or for that entire word. So you can make uh, much bigger puzzles that solve to an entire word. Sorry, there's a spoiler what it solves to, CCCG. Uh, but it's a, it's a challenging puzzle to solve. I haven't actually tried solving this one yet. All right, so on to history. Uh, first yin-yang and then um, graph partitioning. Uh, so yin-yang, uh, the oldest reference we know is from this 1994 uh, Actually, originally, first puzzle appeared in 1983, and then the first naming of the puzzle, uh, you can see it mentioned here in the bottom right. This is uh, Shiromaru uh, Kuromaru puzzle, um, was, uh, and then it became a regular puzzle in this uh, Japanese puzzle magazine called Puzzler. Uh, and uh, since then, it's appeared in many settings, and the most popular name these days seems to be Yin Yang, so that's what... Uh, we've stuck with here. Uh, Shiromaru Kuromaru means white circle, black circle. Pretty natural. Okay. So from a research standpoint, uh, there's been quite a lot of work on pencil and paper puzzles, proving them to be NP complete. And a lot of these are also related to other fundamental problems in TCS. So just a sampling of ones uh, that we were aware of and through connections between is a uh, number link is related to vertex disjoint paths. Uh, similarly, spiral galaxies and Tatami Bari are related to partitioning into various shapes in the plane, mostly partitioning into rectangles. Uh, Slitherlink and the witness are related to filling in paths with preset vertices, so relation to Hamiltonian paths. Masayu is related to angle restricted tours in the plane and path puzzles are related to discrete tomography. And of course, now we add uh, our yin puzzles, which are related to these graph partitioning problems. So more on graph partitioning problems. Uh, there's a lot of work on different problems of this sort that all have to do with assigning vertices in a graph to different, uh, different color classes obeying certain properties. The most common ones we saw when looking at the literature were connected. So all of, our, uh, all of our vertices of a single color class are connected. 
in addition, balanced, uh, which means that these classes have approximately the same number of vertices, or sometimes exactly the same number of vertices, and compact, uh, with compact meaning the number of edges between the different color classes is small, or some notion of small. So most related to our work is a set of results on NP completeness for finding balanced partitions in grid graphs. We're also working in grid graphs. So some of these include two colors for weighted graphs, hardness for three colors in unweighted graphs, and hardness for many colors in solid grid graphs. And recall that we're also working in solid grid graphs, unweighted with only two colors, but the difference with this problem is we pre-label a large number of the vertices uh, into one of the two color classes, uh, whereas these have none of the vertices pre-assigned or possibly one for each color class. And there's also been work on approximation algorithms for these balanced partitions. The other difference with our problem uh, here, we have uh, these these are solid grid graphs are, you know, they're exponentially many. And here we're just looking at M by N grid graphs. There's only one for a given size. So it's simpler in that sense, but we're making it harder in the labeling aspect. So our reduction is from this problem tree residue vertex breaking or TRVB uh, introduced by two of the authors, uh, uh, or actually maybe a SWAT, it's an even year. Um, and, so we're given in this problem uh, a four regular planar multigraph. So every vertex looks like this bottom picture. And we're for each vertex, we're allowed to do one of two things. We can leave it alone and it still looks like a vertex, or we can split it apart or break that vertex into four leaves, uh, four vertices of degree one. And our goal is to make the graph into a tree. So it has to stay connected and it has to become acyclic. And deciding whether this is possible is MP complete. Uh, here's an example of a four regular planar multigraph, uh, which has a solution. Here it's a yes instance. If you break these two vertices, then you end up with a tree. Um, and so you can imagine that we're going to represent this uh, tree constraint similar to the uh, grid graph partition problem where we want to make two trees. Uh, here, this problem, we only need to make one tree. So the fundamental part of this reduction is the vertex gadget. So here we're representing edges by rows of black circles, which will continue outwards and eventually connect together. And in the middle, there's going to be a choice for this vertex here. And there's only two possible solutions, uh, which is a pretty easy derivation. So assuming we start with black, then there's a uh, corner constraint, can't have opposite colors. So the next one needs to be a black circle, black circle again. And similarly, if we had started with a white, the alternating would force them all to be white. And we can see here, if we fill those all with black circles, all of these are now connected through. Whereas if we filled them with white circles, we have now separated out all of these portions of the black circles. So looking at how these fit together, uh, we want to take our tree residue vertex breaking instance, uh, give an orthogonal bedding in a grid, and then every single one of those integer locations in this grid embedding, we're going to replace with the nine, nine tile. And so these tiles you can see here have the vertex gadget still in the middle and that fundamental piece, but now we're wrapping around the edges so that they line up in certain rows and columns. Similarly, we can wrap the edges so that they also lie in those same rows and columns and we'll all connect together. And then here, of course, is an instance. So one question is why do these enforce the constraints we want to have the tree rest of vertex breaking? Well, if we had a cycle in this uh, original tree rest of vertex instance, it would correspond to all of these black circles being connected up, partitioning this white region into two parts, which is not allowed. Similarly, if we disconnected some portion of our tree rest of vertex breaking instance, our black circles would become disconnected. Here's, we can, here's what the corresponding thing looks like when you solve it. 
Okay, so this was the version of yin yang without the two by two constraint. Uh, so just partitioning black and white into connected regions. Uh, now let's add in the two by two constraint and require that in fact, each of them it becomes a tree. Uh, so now we're gonna do the same reduction, but our vertex gadget is going to be more complicated. Uh, so we have um, the uh, wires that connect to the edges are on the bottom here. So this is again, a degree four vertex. Uh, but now we have this complicated mess that attaches to some uh, general filler on the top. But let's just think about what the possible solutions are. Suppose there's going to be exactly two, just like before. Suppose that this pixel is black. Uh, well, then this one can't be white because of the alternating two by two constraint lemma. Um, and then this one can't be white because of that alternating two by two. And so in fact, all of these have to be black. Then uh, similarly, this can't be black. It's got to be white. Um, and this one can't be white because of that two by two, so it's black. Um, and then this can't be black because of alternation, so it's white and indeed white all the way down here and symmetrically on this side. Um, and then for black to be connected, uh, these all have to be black. So just from that initial pixel, we forced the entire solution. And you can see indeed that the um, black Re, the black edges got connected together in the bottom. Um, he, the solution I just showed you is on the left. And then the other solution, which is just flipping all those, those pixels black and white uh, is on the right. And here you see that the edges are broken. So uh, this has exactly the same behavior as before. So the proof more or less works the same. First, we uh, line everything up um, into consistent rows and columns. Uh, so all of the action is, uh, so we have our original gadget and we just route the edges to be, uh, to line up on those particular rows and columns. And so if you take our instance, we get a much larger example um, and corresponding solution. Um, here's the hard part is proving that this actually works, that you actually get a tree uh, for black and white in the solved case. Um, the rough idea is the filler is alternating columns of black and white, and those columns attach through this big uh, one black row on the top, uh, along with the uh, bottoms of the various gadgets. Those together connect together all of the, the black background stuff and symmetrically upwards for the white. So, so those are our proofs. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there's a number of open problems left. Uh, a lot of puzzles care about having a single unique solution, as we mentioned before. So we care a lot about having ASP, another solution problem, or Sharp P, the counting version, hardness here. Uh, and it turns out our reduction is parsimonious. It preserves numbers of solutions. So a corresponding result for tree residue vertex breaking in uh, four planar graphs would suffice for showing ASP or Sharp P hardness for yin yang puzzles. Similarly, we use quite a few initial assigned vertices. Uh, we're curious whether it's fixed parameter tractable with respect to the number of initial clues given. Um, and some other interesting things to explore might be yin yang puzzles on hexagonal or triangular grids rather than square grids, or looking at this version of graph or tree partitions in other special cases of graphs, uh, say bounded tree width graphs. And from a puzzle to standpoint, we can draw inspiration from these other graph partition problems uh, try more colors, try things like balance constraints uh, or others to see if they make interesting puzzles. So that's our talk. Um, maybe you'll consider using TRVB in your hardness proofs. And, and thank you. Any questions?